everybody, Paul Sincere from Fish Shark Marketing. Uh, I hope you, I really hope you like the show. I hope you like us. If you, if you like us, please give us, give us all five stars on, on iTunes or wherever you listen to the show and, and, and tell your friends, maybe write a little review. It can really help us. Thanks. Thanks. Guys, it looks like my networking attempts have been kind of paying off. I got some emails from some uh, prospective clients. Is it okay if I read a few off to you, or at least this first one? Hey, we're always looking for new clients, Paulson. Do you mind if I call you Paul? Oh, sure. That's fine. That's okay. It's just I, I know a Paulson, and he stole crack cocaine from a dealer and had my Volkswagen shot up. It was annoying. Oh, geez. I'm sorry. Yeah, Paul's No fine. worries, Paul. Um, What you got for us? Well, it, it's an email from an anonymous source, so it, it may be a little trouble doing any uh, background check on them, but okay. but it's it's pretty exciting it's pretty interesting i think so far i'm peaked uh, uh all it says is the subject line is fuck man and then there's a, a a brief request that we put together a commercial for fuck man it, it fuck reads man. Oh, oh, fuck man so i'll read it directly from from email it says mm -hmm. please make a commercial using this audio for fuck man and uh then there's a little mp3 a short clip that I can play for you. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, again. I am peaked. Well, play it. Fuck man eat. Fuck man sleep. Fuck man give. Fuck man take. Fuck man the man you can fuck. Okay. We're not sure what fuck man is or is not, but I suppose there's a lot of directions we can go with that. I was thinking maybe if we assemble. Uh, around 80 pounds of hamburger meat and, and, and wrap it in cellophane in the shape of a man. That's a man. And you could technically do it, do it with it if you want. So you're, you're saying a fuck man is a large pile of hamburger meat? Well, I'm not saying that. I'm not a saying that. A large pile but I'm, of fuckable hamburger meat. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that it 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 is something we could do if you want. I'm I mean, not. I, I'm not. I'm not necessarily the target audience for for Buckman, which is a man you can fuck. I think, but uh, I know that there's a lot of people out there who um, it's kind of the last taboo. You know, fuck a man. Maybe that's what they want. It is the last taboo. I'll give you that. Um, many, many have attempted and many have failed to make the case for fucking a man. But I don't know. I'm 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 confused by this. Uh, I'm I'm I've, I've got many questions, none of which I really want the answer to. So I'm not going to ask them. But I am curious as to what what what, what exactly do they want us to do? Just just put that commercial jingle to visuals. I mean, you're talking about making a man out of hamburger meat. Uh, that's us making a product. I'd like to assume these people have a product, and it's called Fuck Man, and it's the man you can fuck. I'm with you. I would like to assume a lot of things. I assume there will be money. I assume there will be a product. I assume there will be a relationship. However, right now we have a lot of questions, which is also exciting. That could go in so many different directions. The, the potential, as they say, is endless. So maybe we should fuck that meat. Right. S spin that laptop round. I want to look at this email. Right. Have you tried calling the number at the bottom? Oh, is that a telephone number? I haven't used one of those in a while. You haven't used a telephone in a while? No, no, no. I, I, I'm i much more of you a... You get a company-issued BlackBerry. Have you not oh. been... Have you not even switched it on? Is that what that was? I, I thought it was some sort of portable gaming device. I'm really not into gaming. Paul, when we gave you that BlackBerry, it was under the express understanding that you would be taking my Dean Kane account from me. He's still calling me about the rabbits. I don't want to hear about the goddamn rabbits anymore. They're not responsible for his failed acting career. 
He can't blame everything on any woodland creature he sees. And if he's gonna, I don't want to hear it. Tony Black, I'm not angry at you, Paul. I'm not angry. I'm really just, sorry. Just put the phone on. Let sure. me deal with this. Right. Hang on. I'm ringing the number. Hello? Hello, yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay. Fucking up. Someone who you don't know, you've been very talkative. Right, be quiet. Right, hello, yes. My name's James Limpet. I'm from Fish Shark Marketing. You recently sent an email to one of my colleagues, Paulson Sear. Although, if, if it's all right with you, I'd rather refer to him as Paul. It's just I know a Paulson and he stole all of my collectible USB uh, flash drives. So I'm going to call him Paul. But you sent an email to my friend Paul. And yeah, you, you, you pitched a commercial for something called the Fuck Man. Fuck Man Give, Fuck Man Take, Fuck Man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the one. No, you don't have to do the jingle at me. No, you certainly don't have to repeat it. Oh, fuck sake. Mm hmm. The man you can fuck. Right, right. Thank you. I get the idea. Um, it seems to me you've got this jingle, you're very confident in it, but we don't know what a fuck man is, okay? I'm assuming, with the last part of your little commercial there, the man you can fuck, it's some sort of sexual... T oh, well, there's no need to take offence, sir. There's no need to take offence at all. If you tell me there's a man I can fuck, I'm assuming I'm gonna fuck the man. Well, what does it mean? He hung up. Apparently, they're very adamant this is not sexual at all. Really? No, he he kept doing the jingle at me, and just kept. There was someone else in the background, some woman's voice, just just saying, "Do something with that. Do something with that. Do something with that." Huh. The moment I suggested. The, the man you can fuck might have some sexual connotations. He got very offended and hung up. Well, I mean, fuck is one of those words, like smurfy or what have you. It can mean a lot of different things in context. Maybe he means fuck like behead or skin alive. I've heard it used in, in that way. Like, hey, buddy, fuck you. And then they skin him alive. You know, like uh, at recess in the schoolyard. You, you guys, you guys know what I mean, right? I never went to Boston Tech. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm from, I'm not from around here. Yeah, we moved into the city. Okay, well, I mean, all I'm saying is, I guess we can reinterpret the meaning of fuck if we want. Maybe it's some kind of a punching bag, like a stress release thing. You know, something you can. Uh, put put torment and and pain and misery onto oh. so that you feel better about your own life, but without harming anything that really matters. Ah, so Craig. Yeah, like like Craig, exactly like Craig. Whoa, the, the intern. Craig, the intern, he's fuck man, the man you can fuck. Oh my God, he's marketing Craig's. Give me a second. I'm gonna call this bastard back up. Hello. Hello, yes, it's 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 me again. Yeah, yeah, no, don't hang up. Right? Are you marketing interns? Uh-huh. Interns called Craig? Specifically Craig, our, our intern. Oh! Oh, no, that makes perfect sense. No, no, I totally agree, he is a dickhead. No, no, I tell you what, next time... No, no, this is this is an embarrassing misunderstanding. Okay, no, I'm with you now. All right, yeah, no, next time I see him, I'll give him a Chinese burn from you, okay? All right, I'll see, speak to you later then, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we should get drinks together sometime. Yeah, we can talk about what a little dickwad Craig is. All right, thanks, bye. Turns out it's his parents. I saw Michael Sarah last weekend out at uh, out at a club. Are you sure it was Michael Sarah? It wasn't Michael President Sarah? Obama. No, you know, you know what he's like with those impressions. I know, I know. Well, no, that's that's the thing. He was he was just sort of taking it easy. He clearly wasn't working that night. Um, right, right, right. But I, you, have you noticed anything strange about the way he like the way he moves? 
Michael Sarah or President Obama or both? Michael Sarah. Huh. There's something strange about the way Sarah moves. I don't trust the way Obama moves. No, he's a snake in the grass. Hmm. Well, I mean, quite literally, he comes from the lineage of the snake people. I mean, all, right. all American presidents do. We all know that. I mean, that's all ratified in the Black Amendments. We all know right. that. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, Michael Sarah, obviously not, not part of the snake uh, dominion. No, no, um, he's just a... Very, very, very talented performer. And very fidgety now. I mean, I was yeah. worried he was, like, getting that, you know, that whole wobbly disease thing. But apparently not. See, I just assumed it was cocaine at first. Because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, you know, I know that that's how I get. Yeah, uh, yeah. I get oh, no, real get... fidgety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Doris has asked if she can have $5 a pop on you when, when your when neck's been snorting. Uh, I said no. I'm very possessive, and I'm and I'm grateful, frankly. Pop on Conrad wobbly disease. What? I'm. What are we talking about? You've not been in the business very long, Paul. Um, but but don't worry. Uh, your complimentary cocaine package should be with you in about two weeks. Then then you'll know what we're talking about. But I think I figured out what's going on with Michael Sarah. Okay. You know how we've always wondered at his spectacular ability at impressions? He, he's a natural ball mimic, man of a thousand faces. I, I think it's because the exterior of his body has no actual life in it. It's, it's like malleable, like, like, like soft clay, right? I have noticed that. There's, there's almost an absence of light. Mm -hmm, in, in, mm -hmm. the, in, the, in the soft shell of Michael Cera. Almost like like how light cannot penetrate the surface of something uh, if it's too dark. Uh, almost like, like just animation and energy and just, just positivity can't seem to penetrate Michael Cera. Yeah, and that's and that's that's what what I thought was interesting is because I was seeing him at the club and he was sitting having a drink, mm -hmm. just sort of relaxing. And I swear he was trying to get out of the seat, but his body wasn't, like, moving? Huh. Mm -hmm. So what was moving, if not his body? Did you get his autograph? I think his skeleton's trying to get out. Oh. I think that's what's going on. I think there's more life in Michael Sarah's skeleton than there is in the rest of his body, and it's trying to escape. You think Michael Sarah's skeleton is trying to escape his own body? Yeah, and I mean, wouldn't you? True point, fair point. Yeah. I suppose. I mean, did you see any bones jutting out of his of his thigh or out of his his hand? Maybe a finger bone? No, I didn't see anything actually penetrating the flesh. And, and, and that's, I'm actually a little bit worried for the skeleton. It could suffocate in there. I'm, I'm going to say something now, and I didn't, I feel a bit silly now. Because I didn't mention it at the time, because I just thought it was... One of those accidents that happen, you know, if if I see Val Kilmer, you know, soil himself again, I'm not going to mention it. You know, it's embarrassing to the client. If I see uh, Brett Michaels uh, struggle to get an erection when he's got his pants around his ankles in my office saying, see, look at me, I can do it, I can do it. And then he leaves crying. I'm not going to tell everyone, am I? Because that would be embarrassing to the client. So I thought that this issue, when I last went for drinks with Michael Sarah, was, was just one of those things. It was an involuntary bodily thing that, that can't be helped, so I didn't bring it up. But it, in retrospect, it makes sense now. Um, we were having wine spritzers, um, I want to say about three or four Thursdays ago. At one point, he burped, and I'm like, mm, let's, let's ignore that, polite company but as he burped his uh, mouth seemed to tear open and a skull came out of the mouth and went help me and was quickly swallowed back in now i thought he he'd just done one of those sicky burps right and it had gotten a bit too far and i was like well don't bring it up but now that you've mentioned that his skeleton might hurt, might be trying to leave his body, I'm beginning to feel like the skull screaming help me inside Michael Sarah's mouth could be connected. Might might have been some kind of a like a, a signal yeah. or something, right. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to say I don't believe in coincidences, but I believe in them a lot. Uh, so I'm not about to rule out that these two are, are totally unrelated incidents.
Hmm. Hmm. But they could be connected. It sounds like you two are, are friends with the Michael Sarah. Nah, nah, you two hates Michael Sarah. Bono can't stand the motherfucker. Really? We're not close, but he's done some work for us in the past. We've we've hired him to appear at functions as various people over he's the years. He's one of our more successful and more bearable clients. He yeah. doesn't complain much at all. I mean, he doesn't do much at all, apart from fidget and... And occasionally uh, uh, skeleton fingers come out of his normal fingers and claw at you as if trying to get the, whatever shred of life you have and claim it for itself. As though it's trying to gain purchase. Yeah, yeah. Which again is just me assuming that's how Michael Sarah thought. Could you then ask him, do you have a sentient skeleton inside of your body? Well, that's trying not, to you don't want to be rude to the oh, guy. Oh, do we want to be that tacky? That's really... That That's seems... like asking penis girth measurements. Yeah. Which I have done, and, and he stands at a, a respectable five inches round. So that ain't bad. That's nothing to sneeze at. Not at all. I, no. I, I would sneeze at it. I mean, I, I did sneeze. I was doing a line off his boner, but there you go. So you've done cocaine off of the boner. Right off the boner. Not the literal bone uh skeleton bone that's just something you see in passing like a burp yeah yeah every now and then you get this glimmer of a skeleton that looks like it's trying to escape michael Sarah's body but i never considered that that might actually be what's happening until conrad brought it up well if that's what's happening do we do we need to help him or or the skeleton or both i, I mean it depends who can act better we've not seen the skeleton in action Whereas Michael Serra, as it exists right now, is the man of a thousand voices. He's the new Lance Henriksen. And he's kind of not that much of a pain in the ass to be around. No, no. The skeleton, as you imagine most skeletons do, screams a lot and plays the xylophone on its ribcage. Yeah, you know, every awkward experience I've ever had with Michael Serra has had something to do with that skeleton. Yeah, now, now that I think about it, because... Uh, this wasn't the case when we first started talking about this. Looking back in hindsight now, I've seen the skeleton a lot. Huh. Yeah, you're right. Seems to be constant. Yeah, canonically, I've now seen the skeleton a lot. So what are you... Now that you know, that now that we've decided, maybe, maybe there's something we can do to help them? I just want to help, guys. Honestly... Again, now that I think about it, having seen the skeleton do all of its screaming and rattling of chains and playing xylophone on its ribcage, I think the skeleton's an asshole. Yeah, the skeleton's a dick. Less skeleton, more Sarah. Uh, I think we should duct tape Sarah's nose, ears, mouth, anus, and pee hole shut to stop that, to keep that skeleton inside. We need to plug him up. Maybe we could just, like, dip him entirely in wax. Wax Sarah, I like it. Sell him to the Yankee Candle. He is a human being with a bizarre supernatural ailment. Shouldn't we call a witch doctor or perhaps do some sort of seance or an exorcism? To... Uh, well, we could take him down the woods and, and consult with the shaman, but I don't like drawing on his power too much because, you know, we each get a card like a Starbucks card and too many stamps on that and he comes for your soul. And I'm, I'm near the end of my limit. I had him uh, retile my roof the other day. I think it's time to put the office on notice. I want to send out a mass email. Whoever's fucking the pumpkins needs to stop. Thank you. Finally. I, this has been really, really gross. What? I mean, I'm trying to carve festive Halloween decorations, and I keep finding the pumpkins pre-fucked. Pre-fucked? Someone keeps fucking the pumpkins, Paul. I don't know if you've uh, noticed around the office. Um, we get a limited amount of pumpkins that we're allowed each year. Senior management lays out a budget for the carving of jack-o'-lanterns, the scooping of fresh delicious innards for the pumpkin pie. Uh, the whole harvest Halloween thing is, is very, very carefully financially planned. And people like this are literally fucking it up for the rest of us. Now, I understand pumpkins are juicy, pumpkins are plump, pumpkins are sexy, I just want to get in that fucking pumpkin. I get, I get it! But after Halloween, when they're a bit mulchy, 
and we don't need them anymore. Have your way with them. I don't want them fucked when they're in prime condition and I'm trying to carve jack o lanterns There is no way at this rate we're going to have enough clean pumpkins to make the office sufficiently spooky for Halloween. I, I don't want to alarm you. We've got no clean pumpkins left. What? I keep having to carve around the jizz. You're finding semen on pumpkins in the office? The pumpkins are covered in semen. They're more like pumpkins than pumpkins right now, Paul. I hadn't noticed. I should take a peek. You should take a look. You'll actually be impressed. I mean, I will admit it's forced me to be creative because some of them are almost caked in it. I don't want to touch it. So I'm having to carve on the bits that are unspoiled. So some of them look a little bit weird as they've got like an eye up here and an eye down here and a crooked mouth as I'm just avoiding all the jizz stains. Yeah, it's sounding like the jizz may be the most weird thing about the way the pumpkins look. Could you clean it off or is it Oh, jizz? yeah, yeah, that'd be great if we could clean it off. If we could clean it off, that would be fantastic. But at, right, and again, you're new to the company. Let me fill you in. Every year, the senior partners give us a big budget for Halloween right? We spend most of that money on pumpkins. Unfortunately, that money is taken from other resources and facilities in the building, meaning they cut down on non-essential things like personal hygiene. Uh, this poll, um, I know you asked me the other day and I forgot to get back to you on the question, this incidentally is why no running water has been in the bathroom for three weeks. Right. There's no water in the office. Uh, none of us can afford the cleaning supplies because, again, that all falls under non-essential work. Tidying, laundering, cleaning, uh, 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 running water, lunch breaks. It, it's all gone. There's, on, there's literally only money for pumpkins and we've spent it all already. And then someone has to just come along and fuck all the pumpkins. Someone came along and, and spunked in, on, around and near all of the pumpkins. And they they were aware that this was our, our our whole goal for the season was to carve these pumpkins and they they and they knew there was no soap. The only way they wouldn't know that is if they were new around here. That's oh. all I'm saying. Because uh. this is a, a seriously important part of the office culture. Yeah, it's a it's a pumpkin patch. It's not pumpkin snatch. All right, all right. I, I just want to make sure I get this clear. So we spent all of our budget on Presumably hundreds of pumpkins. Not just the budget. I mean, we don't get paid this month. Because we bought pumpkins. Because we bought what some people and what other marketing firms have in the past called too many pumpkins. Which, that's just, that's absurd. <laughs> Fucking ludicrous. I hand carve almost all of them myself. Some, some of them get broken when I smash them over Craig's head. I mean, that's just cost of doing business. But I carve most of them. I'm, I normally put lovely candles in them. Turns the office into a spooky time. Uh, it's very hard to move from one office to the next because the hallways are full of pumpkins. Uh, it's a fire hazard. Yes, this building has caught fire about five times in the past five years. But it's spooky. It's festive. Oh. And those pumpkins are damn sexy. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, we've all looked at them. We've all thought, what if? Uh, we, we've all wanted a juicy pumpkin in its prime. But, you know, you wait until after the Halloween party and then it's just trousers down, dicks in, pumpkin seeds everywhere. Not beforehand. That's just... It's, it, it's a faux pas, to say the least. And a waste of my money and time. Well, I suppose... Uh, should we find the person who... Had sex with the pumpkins and, and absolutely get them to... this this and then you know it's festive for the season, but we should have a witch hunt for the pumpkin fucker, for the pumpkin fucker who I strongly suspect to be Craig. Ah, Craig the intern. Craig the intern. Craig the sin turn. Oh, ah, uh, so we know where Craig is. Should we? What should we do? I think the the only punishment that's fit for a pumpkin fucker like Craig. It's to force him to fuck every pumpkin left. Yeah, yeah. You catch a boy smoking a cigarette, you make him smoke the whole packet so he won't do it again. That's right. If I make Craig fuck every pumpkin in the office in front of everyone, in the parking lot, he'll never do it again. What if he didn't do it? And they're, they're already covered in semen. Isn't that, 
and there's no soap or any sanitary uh, devices in the building of any kind, what if he catches some sort of semen disease on his penis? That's his that's his problem. He shouldn't have fucked the pumpkins in the first place. Now he's got to refuck them. He pre-fucked them, now he refucks them. That's right. If you're not prepared to handle the consequences of your actions, you shouldn't perform them. Yeah, you want to get a little slice of pumpkin pie, you're prepared to pay the pumpkin piper. By fucking it. By fucking the pumpkin. With your penis, erect and engorged. Again. Again, twice. Fuck that pumpkin twice. You fuck a pumpkin once, you'd be mad enough to fuck it twice. Fist Shark Marketing is Jim Sterling, Conrad Zimmerman, and Paul Sincere. Theme music by Ben Rama. Additional music by Alazar Chan. Our editor is Alan Smithy. Get more episodes and learn how to help support the show at fistshark.com. Follow us on Twitter at fistshark for more of our exploits. Complaints can be forwarded via email to fistsharkmarketing at aol.com. And remember, you say parasitic, we say symbiotic. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>